Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, merely a ghost in a machine, and it is time for episode 45, probably, of my Paradise Killer Let's Play. And today, we are going to be... well, we're first off... I say first off, first off we're going to go do something else, but then, after we've done the other thing we're going to do, we're going to go accuse witness of various crimes against the state and possibly... Uh, reality itself, depending on how important you judge the council to be. But before we do that, I'm actually going to go answer one of the questions I've been asking for a very long time. Namely, what happened with the corpses? So, once again, we're at the very end of the game and there's only a handful of outstanding questions that I haven't managed to find out the answers to. So I've looked up a couple of hints. I don't know what the answer is, I just know roughly where to look. And uh, yeah, so apparently there's a little uh, a doorway around here with a nightmare computer that I may have forgotten or may have missed entirely. It's hard to tell which sometimes. And if I can find that and crack it open, like some kind of digital egg. We will find out the origin of the missing corpses. Hmm. Was it up here, maybe? Anyway, one thing I did want to um, highlight, because I've, uh, I've been very, very negative about this game recently, because it is very badly written. Uh, there's a lot of good ideas in it, which are almost entirely executed badly. However, I think that the skill which has gone into the design of this world and this island is unmistakable. It's a really beautiful place to hang out, and it's a really beautiful place to explore and learn about in the abstract, you know, beyond its uh, disappointing narrative. I, be I believe I said this early on, but like... Oh, is it that over there? What is this shed? Can I, can I enter it? Can I open it? It's not this shed, this is nothing. Um, but yeah, so... There's, there's a lot of skill that has gone into the creation of this place. And not just in terms of like interesting individual objects, but in terms of its overall layout and conception. Uh, in some of the earliest episodes, I talked about how carefully designed the sight lines are, so that when you wander through this world, you're constantly, you're constantly given these like arresting, well composed um, vistas to gaze get to to gaze upon. It's really smart and really, really well done. Um, I am gonna lose my mind if I can't find this place though. Supposedly, there is some kind of a nightmare computer accessible shed around here somewhere. But yeah, it's a um it's a skill it's a skill from architectural design that is most commonly applied nowadays uh, in the art of theme park creation. Whether uh, hobbyists playing video games or actual theme park designers designing actual theme parks, the sight lines are absolutely key. This is one of the reasons why the Disney parks are so accomplished. I kind of loathe Disney as a company, but that doesn't mean that they um, don't put a large degree of artistry into their into their parks, park park history, if you will. Um, with the use of with the use of you know clever terrain objects and so on to, to block sight lines and prevent any uh, any vision of the wrong kind of thing from the right kind of place and so on. Anyway, I can't find it. I may look up another hint, but for now I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna go bother witness before I lose my mind entirely. Oh hey, the extra dimensional hole. Where's he gone? Ah, there he is. Alright, this might be a this might be a long conversation with some awkward questions for him. 
witness to the end. I checked your building logs. Your story checks out. Of course it does. The righteous have nothing to hide. Carmelina was in your apartment all last night, right? But what about when you stepped out to take a call? I didn't see her out on my balcony. I was over there. I stepped out using my sliding door. So if Carmelina had left by the front door, you wouldn't have seen her? I wouldn't. I also didn't hear the elevator, so she did meet leave my apartment. She would have only have been out here. Did you hear the elevator every time I have come to speak to you? Now that you present that question to me, I'm surprised to say that I did not. I put it down to exhaustion. I haven't slept. Why are you asking? I'm working on a lead. Why did you want Crimson to get the key to the second seal? I didn't. You're lying. I have testimony that you not only asked her to get the key, but that she gave you the key as well. That simply isn't true. I have almost nothing to do with Miss Acid. She's lying to you, Lady Love Dies. You are being played. Have you got the key? I didn't even know the second seal required a key. I don't have it. You're lying. I am not, Lady Love Dies. Miss Acid is tricking you. She's turning us against each other. Why? It's your job to find out. Well, I mean, I don't believe that for a second. You asked Crimson to get the key to the second Holy Seal from k -Hax. No, I... Witness, I'm losing my patience. By asking her to do that, and by her account, taking a copy from her, you're the prime suspect for who went through it. I did nothing of the sort. You're denying all of it, or just going through the seal? All of it. I had nothing to do with Miss Acid's preposterous story, or the second seal. No desire to cooperate at all. I can't cooperate with a fabrication. I mean, it is her word against his, so... Uh, but he is much more t much more closely tied uh, to the crime. Why did you give Sam a piece of godflesh to hide? What did he tell you? You first. I needed somewhere to store the flesh. I'm worried that there are people in the Syndicate that would sabotage my research. Who? I have nothing concrete. And why? That awful nickname, Perfect25. The desire for perfection now. They don't want someone proving the Council wrong. So you didn't use it with Sam to breach the Fourth Holy Seal? This is the first I've heard of it being used with the Fourth Seal. We'll see about that. Whoops. Well, I guess that's everything from him. May you fly with destroyed Eden, and may you reach the moon. Hmm. I mean, if he was round here when he stepped out onto the balcony, he would not have seen her. Um, actually, where's the, the sliding door? There's the sliding door. But the elevator... This, wait, hang on. What he said is that she would have had to have left by the elevator, right? But the elevator comes up here. The elevator doesn't go. Oh, this is the front door. Okay. So yeah, but she could have she could have just used her magic hyperspace tunnel. So that doesn't mean anything anyway. Hmm. All right, we'll be right back. So, I've looked up very slightly more detail. I don't know what's in here beyond that it relates to the missing corpses. But I remember now that I did find this earlier and couldn't crack it open because we didn't unlock the, the Nightmare Computer. Some Nightmare Computers got listed on my on my thing and for some reason I just missed this one in amongst the sea of, of faces being shown to me. Um, so I guess that's just a Nightmare Computer I, I didn't manage to find on the scanner to come back and check. Or maybe, it, maybe they only show up within a certain radius. Anyway, time to find out. Alright, time to answer this mystery that's been uh, boggling my mind for a very long time. I do think that my theory that, well, we need to find what happened with the corpses, right? Because there were supposed to be two guards out front, they were swapped for people who were not guards, and then those, those other people were killed. 
but the game described it as them having already been dead, right? So it was corpses that were stolen and then dressed in the clothes of the martial guards. So the question is, where did the corpses come from? So of course, my thought was, well, we should look in the only place listed as a graveyard up there. And of course, I found loosely turned earth up there. So I really thought that was where we were going to find out where the martial corpses had been taken from, not um, magical knife wizard torture baby uh, kept in a box. So I guess... This is definitely going to be where the corpses came from, although, who knows. Oh, gross. It looks like something or someone has been dragged through this shed. And this looks like human waste. A couple of days old at most. Oh, so it is poop. Gross. I thought that was old blood. Aikiko removed two prisoners from the barracks prison recently. Were they in this shed? I suppose I can go ask Aikiko about it. Is that it? That's all the information we get from that? Okay. Can we ask Aikiko about it? Good question. Well, that much more directly ties Aikiko to this conspiracy then. Like, she's the only person in a position to have swapped the guards out, which we've known all along, but her, her connection didn't seem to be kind of direct beyond that. Anyway, so let's go see if we can ask her. Grand Marshal Akiko 14. Nope, not a thing. I'm not even going to dignify that with a read. Alright, let's get back. Well, uh, yeah, so I actually just went all the way back inside the Marshal's HQ to go see if there was some kind of something I could do with that fact now that I've uncovered it in there. The answer is nope. So uh, that was a waste of time. But while I was doing that, which took a surprisingly long amount of time, I did have a thought that hasn't occurred to me at all, which is that for all I've heard that this game is sort of vaguely queer, it sure does only have straight relationships in it. Like, maybe that's just a misremembered uh, element on my part, but I'm sure I remember one of the things I'd heard about this game being that it had some kind of queerness to it. But um, every relationship we've heard about so far has been a straight one. Um, and I don't know that we've ever even heard a ca a characters express any kind of <clears throat> non-normative sexuality at all. Um, you know, for all that some of the, the characters' designs are drawn with, with a sort of a lustful gaze at, at male characters, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a gay game. Anyway, that's just a disappointing little aside. Let's go bother Carmelina for possibly the final time. Island. What if I said that there were secret transdimensional corridors crisscrossing the island? I'd say that you've spent too long in the scorching sun, so you don't know anything about them. I have no idea what you're talking about. To be clear, you're denying crafting secret cor corridors and hiding a killer within them. Of course I am, that's totally unbelievable. I think you need a rest, investigator. Crime does not rest, and neither do I. Let's see you explain this away at the trials. Explain what? A total fantasy? We'll see. Can you tell me about the secret panic room experiment? Where did you hear that? People talk. I abandoned that a long time ago. It was designed to be a bunker of sorts. My plan was to dot them around the islands in case of attack. Syndicate members could hide in them. Well, that was... Minimal. Can I ask you something, Architect? What is it? How can you be so sure that the next island will be perfect? There are no certainties in architecture and design. Both are nebulous and subjective. We can never be sure that the design of the next island will be perfect. Why are people calling it Perfect 25? The mind always looks for reassurance. Something concrete to hold on to. The world is chaotic and people crave respite. We believe we have solved the problem of demonic corruption. The Syndicate seized upon this as a sign of success. A sign of perfection. Do you think it will be perfect? As close as we've come to it. The Syndicate has so many problems to solve with our islands. Our work is always undermined by the threat of demonic corruption. We cannot do our holy work while our home rots around us. Can the Syndicate cope if Perfect 25 fails? 
It won't fail. Hypothetically. Concentrate on your investigation. Let me worry about perfection. Investigator, can we just discuss something of a delicate nature? Do you have something you want to tell the investigator? I wasn't truthful. Witness used that bunker for an illegal study of demons. He wanted to find out all we could for the sake of the island. Ever since the beginning of the Syndicate, there has been zero tolerance on demons. The missed knowledge frightened him. He trapped a killer demon and experimented on it. I haven't set foot in there for years, since before he started. Where did he get a killer demon? He trapped one. I don't know how. I kept his secret. He still means a lot to me. The killer demon would die when Island 24 ceases to exist. Henry's demon had already done irreparable damage, so this one wasn't going to do more. What about Witness? I put it out of my mind. We fell apart and each other's matters became private again. I always wonder how true these uh, confessions are supposed to be. So I can still get more information out of her. May the silent goat walk with you. May you reach the moon. I still don't know what dictates when I'm allowed to come back and talk to someone again. A conspiracy crafted from the fabric of the island. Did Carmelina's hidden killer commit the crime to end all crimes? I mean, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... I don't know. I don't know if they're trying to throw each other under the bus, or if they were in cahoots, or if they it was two murder plots that happened to go off at the same time, or if Witness had an old murder plot that- where am I going? I don't know. Or if Witness had an old murder plot that just happened to uh, be the only way he could try and affect the outcome of um, Carmelina's murder plot. Did I finish your dialogue, Yuri? Yeah, I did. So who does that leave? Those two are maxed out. She's maxed out, he's maxed out. I think maybe, maybe she has a bit more. Yeah, so if I want to come back and talk to Carmelina again, I should I should talk to one of the others first. I th I'm not sure if I've uh, finished talking to Crimson Acid, so let's go talk to Crimson. Got time for a chat, Crimson? You still read much, lady? Not a lot to read in the Idle Lands. Let me give you this. One of the citizens we brought to the island was carrying a few volumes. It's my new favourite. Nagoshi's helicopter. A humble designer dreams about flying a helicopter through the city. It looks good to see achieve his goal. You need to read it to find out. What did you miss most in exile? The old gang. We live in the shadow of genocidal gods. Praise be, of course, but you guys made it better. It was a different time back then. The islands were a mess, but it was us against the world. The syndicate got too comfortable, too predictable. That's why last night happened. A lot of good times on the old islands. Immortality was a fun thing to experiment with. Endless possibility. People started settling down, though. It didn't end because you got exiled. Is this about me getting married? Partly. All of the Syndicate got boring in one way or another. Montserrat started cracking the whip about building better islands. Aikiko got a stick up her ass. Doomjazz knows only so many tricks. I'm glad you got married and found happiness, but you left me behind. I didn't realise. I thought we were just fooling around. Oh, okay. We were. I enjoyed it, but I wanted it to last longer. So, okay, I guess this is the one... <laughs> Ironic to have this conversation after what I said earlier, isn't it? Uh, I, I want to flirt with, with Crimson Acid because who wouldn't? On the other hand, she is a suspect in an ongoing investigation, so unfortunately I must be correct. All good things come to an end, Crimson. It's in the past now. The world turns. I get it. It was good talking to you after all this time, but we need to keep it business from now on. Old wounds and all that. Understood. Relic obtained. 
Enrapturing Manga, Crimson's favorite manga, Nagoshi's Helicopter. It's the story of a mild-mannered designer who dreams of flying a helicopter through the city. Okay, well that's the end of her tree as well. So that leaves Carmelina and maybe Grace Bloodlines. Hmm. It also leaves one lead. Shinji said this helmet was dumped behind a planter near the entrance to the second seal. I don't know how to investigate that because when I had a look, right, I couldn't. I, I explored the area next to the the second seal, and I did not find any any further evidence regarding it. So I'm not really sure what to do with that one, unless there's a Shinji somewhere on the island that expounds on it further, and I simply haven't found him. So let's take a final quick look at that then. Here we are at the scenic second seal. Wait, hang on, maybe it's connected to this. Maybe this is the planter behind which Shinji found it. If not, let's have a quick final look around. In fact, I might even use my secrets of vision. What have we got? Nothing whatsoever, it looks like. So this is behind the first seal, but before the second seal. Hmm. Yeah, no, like, I have no idea what it's referring to. Oh! Oh, I'm a goddamn- I'm a fool! I'm an idiot! I went through here earlier! I've been through this multiple times! How did I not look to my left and notice this? This is where Shinji said he found the space helmet. Pink petals. There aren't any flowers here, so where did they come from? Yuri wears a hat with pink flowers. Hmm. Actually, did that say... Yeah, but it's- so the, the helmet smelled of, um... Oh shit, I've just realised. Someone went to the council chamber, it Was I think it might have been Ice Kiwami, went to the council chamber a little bit before. Is he dead? Or am I thinking of someone else? Several years ago, okay. No, I'm sure that it said someone went to the council chamber a few days before. Maybe it was Kafka Memory. Uh, someone went went a few days before. Um, so in that moment, that must have been someone retrieving the two space helmets that were missing and were clearly used as part of this plot. And there's no reason to assume it was Kafka Memory because um, Kafka Memory is the secret other parent of uh, uh, Murder Baby 5000, who is not listed in our in our characters, although it's that's really irritating, and he definitely should be. Is that listed as in Carmelina's information? Because I'm trying to find out who Danai Dan uh dad was, because I remember getting confused about that previously, because it wasn't Witness. Actually, now that I think about it, we still have no idea about who killed K-Hacks or how that ties into anything. <laughs> but yes, so... Um, someone was using council member blood to get in there to do the crimes in the first place. So presumably that means that one of them went in there at that point to get the helmets in order to come back. But if that's the case, how did they get through in the first place to get the helmets and come back since they needed the helmets to get through in the first place, right? They didn't need the helmets to transgress the seal otherwise. There's something there that's itching my brain, but I can't quite piece it to piece the logic together. Um, maybe that relates to Henry, since Henry would be capable of getting through that seal by himself, because he's demon-infected. But then the question is, how do they make him do that? Hmm. There's definitely something going on here. Anyway, that's going to be it from me for today. Join me next time, and uh, we'll have a final couple conversations, probably brief ones, with... Grace Bloodlines and Carmelina, and um, then I think I'm completely out of evidence in and information. So it'll be a matter of uh, starting the trial and seeing what happens. Probably do an evidence review before then to get everything straight in my head. So thank you so much for watching. Join me again next time for more of this.
as we close into the end game. Did the moon ha always have a bright dot on it? That must be their backup center. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.